Thank you so much. I would like you to uh, initially imagine a technology that could help a child cancer patient physically and mentally during treatment, can keep them connected and informed, and can comfort their whole family. And I want to let you know that that technology is VR. I think Heather's going to ask a few questions of you for a moment. Hi, everyone. So I'd like to do a little interactive um, uh, poll here. So I'm going to have you clap if this applies to you. So really quickly, how many of you have used virtual reality for stress management or meditation? Just real quickly. OK. And how about for enhancing your mood? What about for pain management? Not as many, OK. And for any kind of therapy, physical therapy, mental health therapy, again, not as many, OK. And how about in a hospital environment? Or maybe you know someone personally who used it in the hospital? OK, a little bit more. Great. Thank you for sharing. OK, just going over the agenda really quickly. We've got about 20 minutes. We want to cover as much as we can. We're really excited about what we have to say. So we're going to introduce you to 18 Loop as a company just on a basic level. Uh, we will uh, talk about cancer. So from a macro perspective, like broader cancer, down to uh, what we're doing with pediatric oncology. Just think it's important because that's what, that's what we're really fighting against. Um, we'll talk about our qualification to do this, so to speak, so the, the, the partnerships that we have in place and, and how we're going about doing this with VR. And then um, we'll talk about VR for cancer recovery. That'll be Heather. She uh, has a lot of experience in that area. And as we get to the end, if we have some time, we'll start talking about uh, joint research and family intervention data. And so we've determined that VR is truly a family intervention. We want to explain why that is and some of the data and stories that we have around that based on the experience that we have with our research cohort. And then we have a couple of bullets at the end to tell you where uh, we'll be going in the future. If we have some time, we can get into that a, a little bit more in depth. So 18 Loop as a company and a mission. Uh, my name is Greg Tarnacki. Uh, I was in textiles for 20 years, uh, dealing with companies like ABN Amro Bank, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, CBS, Goldman Sachs, a bunch of uh, enterprise companies. And uh, after doing that for 20 years, I actually got involved in AmeriCorps. So uh, you know that was a great experience for me. I did some work in Newark, New Jersey. And um, after the AmeriCorps experience, I decided, well, I, you know, I kind of wanted to mate uh, technology in my technology career with something in nonprofits. And 18 Loop was born. And so um, it's progressed to the point where it is today. Uh, we have 46 children using our technology. We're expanding that rapidly soon. And uh, we're in fundraising mode. So it's, uh, it's very, very exciting. 18 Loop is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we are all volunteer employees right now, and so you can feel confident if you contribute or you work with us or you offer a partnership uh, that that is really focused on our kids. And uh, we have a couple of different accolades that we won't read. You can read them on the slide. Uh, but more importantly is that we receive some grant funding from Servier Pharmaceuticals. Servier does a lot of work in the oncology area, uh, and they were excited to support us because our missions overlap so well. And uh, finally, we'll get a little bit more into doing joint research with the ACCO. So speaking to cancer, I just wanted to give a, a quick slide on cancer because that's really what we're fighting. That's what the ACCO is fighting against. That's what we're helping them uh, to attack using VR. And um, initially with cancer, the first thing I wanted to mention was a, a little bit of, uh, of language around it so you understand. Um, so pediatric oncology comes from ancient Greek into Latium and the Roman Empire and eventually into Latin. And uh, pedia is for child. Oncology, unc, means mass or tumor. And so you have a, a child doctor working on masses or tumors. And then you have cancer. And uh, cancer means crab in, in ancient language. And so crab really represents a tumor being fed by veins that look like the legs and claws of a crab. So just to give you an idea of where those words come from, which I thought would be a little bit interesting to start. Um, on a broad based scale in 2020, which is the last fully measured year, 19.3 uh, million people in the world uh, were affected by cancer. Almost 50% or a little bit more uh, did not win their fight. 
And so uh, there's still a lot of challenge out there about how to handle it and, and uh, develop medicines and treatments. Cancer comes in hereditary, communicable, communicable and habitual causes. And so some people are not aware, but um, hereditary is a, a given one. So your DNA and what you got uh, when you were born. Uh, communicable could be HPV or hepatitis or something that would allow you to, to catch something that can cause cancer. That, ca that's, uh, that occurs in a lot of places where they're not properly vaccinated, but it is a problem. And habitual causes are largely uh, ingestion of alcohol, ingestion of tobacco, uh, not having the right balanced diet, fruits and vegetables, body mass, and stress. And so as you get to the next piece here, you're talking about the developed and developing world. So from a broad-based perspective, the developed world is slowing down in, in, in the increase in cancer. It's about a 27% increase. And the developing world, it's increasing. And that's because there's a lot of industrialization that's moving into the developing world, which is a concern globally because when you're in the developing world, they don't have as many end-to-end -end treatments for cancer. And so um, you know, because of that, uh, that's problematic. Getting to where we focus, we focus on pediatric oncology, and um, we, uh, there are 400,000 children globally that are affected by pediatric or diagnosed each year, and so it takes about 1,000 days for them to recover. So if you do a little bit of math, you know, there may be as many as a million or a million two that, get, that are either just diagnosed or that are undergoing treatment globally at a given time. Uh, the, the local numbers in the United States are about 16,000 a year, and um, as I said, the time to treat was 1,000 days. And there's about an 87% cure rate, which is wonderful. That cure rate has gone up significantly since the 50s and the 60s. Um, but obviously, if you know five children and you know one out of the five might not make it, it's a terrible thing. And so we're hoping that VR can help them recover in a way where we can actually impact survival rates, which would be really wonderful. So now that you know the problem, a little bit of an overview on cancer, you know, why is 18 Loop really uh, qualified or in, in position to deal with it? And one of those main reasons is the American Childhood Cancer Organization, which is our closest partner. We reach all of our kids through the ACCO, and initially when we contacted them, they were ready to scale to six or 7,000 children almost immediately right off the bat because they have 70,000 families that they manage a relationship with and provide support to. They're experts in cancer, um, the, the CEO of the ACCO, my friend Ruth Hoffman, has edited or written 12 books on pediatric cancer, including a new one on DIPG that's coming out shortly. They're the largest grassroots advocacy organization for cancer, and in the last 15 to 18 months, they have appropriated over $50 million in state funds to go towards research for child's cancer, childhood cancer. And um, that money will go to developing specialized treatment for children who have a different physiology and often use adult treatments, and that's, that's a problem for them. So this is part of the, the mission of the ACCO, which we're proud to be associated with. Uh, they've placed children at the State of the Union. Two years ago, they had a child at the State of the Union. Uh, they've lighted up the White House yellow for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in September. And um, they do a lot of lobbying, as I had mentioned, and their media reach is, uh, is pretty wide. Uh, so uh, the, the, the girl who is one of our 18 loop kids on this slide, that's Molly, and she appeared on ABC's The View through a connection through the ACCO. So in terms of our team, Heather will tell you about her experience right after this, um, but we've got people on the team that we feel are beneficial for this mission as well, so it's not just the relationship with the ACCO. Taylor Freeman is a, a VR CEO. He's Forbes 30 under 30, uh, a very talented young guy, a guy who can help us with coding, a guy who can help us navigate the environment in VR. We're proud to have him. Russ Oprah is a CIO of Finastra. Uh, he's on our board, and he's uh, the CIO of one of the three largest fintech organizations in the United States, and so we're happy to have Russ as well. And Chuck Van Buren runs a digital media company. He's an MIT grad, and he has his MBA from China and is fluent in Mandarin. Uh, the Mandarin hasn't helped us yet, but, but, uh, but it is a, a great thing. And now I'd like to turn it over to Heather to talk about her experiences specifically using VR uh, to fight cancer. Thanks, Greg. So I'd like to talk a little bit about why 18 Loop is so important for me to be a part of and why I support their mission, our mission. 
Um, in the end of 2014 and into 2015, I, well, in the end of 2014, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type of blood cancer. Um, it typically, people are usually diagnosed with it in uh, their young adult life time frame, around the 30 to 35 age range. And um, I experienced a lot of uncomfortable side effects from the treatment. And pain, anxiety, um, in the clinic, outside of the clinic while I was at home. And I was given a meditation from my clinic. They actually created and recorded a meditation to help me with some of my symptoms. Um, but that really wasn't enough. I needed something a little bit more immersive, I think. And so I needed to find a better solution for the long-term uh, treatment-related discomfort that I was experiencing after treatment was over, as well as I was hoping to find a solution for myself just in case I relapse ever again. Um, I really wanted to find something that the, could help me with the discomfort, as that was something that I was the most fearful of ever having to experience again. So. I, I rediscovered virtual reality through Google Cardboard in 2018. It was sitting on a shelf. I was teaching Lamaze as a registered nurse at the time, and I thought, what if we put Lamaze in a VR headset and used it to help navigate pain and discomfort for not only maybe childbearing individuals, but also cancer patients based on my own personal experience. And um, it's a good thing that I had a plan because unfortunately I relapsed in 2019 with stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma again. And this time it was a, a lot more serious. Um, I had to do a bone marrow transplant, so it was very important to me to have something that I could help myself get through this um, even more difficult situation. So in 2019, I started the process of doing a stem cell transplant, which started off with chemotherapy and then a one month long hospital stay. Um, so I decided to bring my neighbor's Oculus Go into the hospital with me. I also reached out to a VR company who was already in the VR for healthcare space, and they um, nicely helped me out by sending me a headset that had some preloaded information on there, for, uh, therapy on there for me to try out. And I advocated for virtual reality while I was in the hospital. I actually showed my doctors, I showed my nurses, I showed the cleaning lady. Um, I had my mom trying it out in, in the, in the uh, hospital room. And it was very beneficial both during and after treatment. So during treatment, while I was in the hospital for 30 days, I was very bored, I wasn't allowed off the unit. I could instead go to the beach if I wanted to or go to a rainforest in virtual reality. And I had the immersive experience of the sound and the sights and my body really um, reacted to what my eyes and my senses were bringing in because the hospital room was no longer in my peripheral vision, so I was fully immersed. And that really allowed me to escape the stress of cancer. I could even relax on the beach if I wanted to. I could actually feel the warm rays of the sun uh, on, my, on my skin almost um, when I was on the beach scene. So that really refocused my attention from a very stressful situation to um, giving me a tool to allow myself to, to almost like heal myself in a way. So this is a picture uh, of me using a headset in the hospital in Buffalo where I was in 2020, uh, January 2020. And then here is my doctor, one of my stem cell transplant doctors. She was uh, inside one of the swimming with the dolphins experiences um, and she thought that was really cool. And she even suggested, wow, this could be used for patients on palliative care or we could use this in the break rooms for staff. So she started thinking of ways to use it also. So I was, I was really uh, getting the word out apparently. Thanks, Heather. 
Thank you. Well, the focus that we had uh, for the speech, you know, towards the end here is family intervention, how we affect families and, and how that works. And so we have a, a limited amount of time, so we've talked like basically about what we're doing to get into some s statistical information about, you know, what that looks like. And so, um, let's see if we can. So we're doing a, a joint research project with the American Childhood Cancer Organization, who we mentioned uh, earlier, the, the Joint Experimental Intervention Research Study. There are three areas of impact that we look at, which are um, VR for mood, uh, VR for gaming, and VR for collaboration and third party. And there's also, um, th there's also uh, gaming, mood, pain, and, and, uh, and third party. And so these areas are all distinct and they all benefit our children. And so a brief story, just a really brief one. Um, we had a child, Eric, who got involved with us using VR. They're using We'll talk a little bit about the technology in a second, but they use Trip, um, uh, the, uh, the great company Trip. They have a meditation application which has benefited our kids very well. Um, but he also has used gaming. And in that particular case, Eric was a bone marrow transplant recipient. And six months later, he was doing a, uh, a, a bike ride for a five, or, or a 5K run, actually. And they believe that a lot of the basis of that was the physical activity and the meditative activity that he did in the hospital that enhanced his actual progress in recovery, which was really, really wonderful for us and exciting for Eric, who's a great kid. Um, there, there are more stories like that. We've got a bunch of them, but we want to get to a couple of other things. Um, and let's just get to some statistics, and we'll talk about that really briefly here. And so we've got so many stories, but we want to get to some of the, some of the meat here. And so we have 46 children using the headsets. Um, they've been distributed over the course of about, you know, about the last 15 to 18 months through the ACCO to kids who bring them to the hospital and have them home as well. And 96% uh, do better overall with VR. Um, so it's, um, you know, almost all of them see a large benefit from the, the platform as a whole. Um, you know, the idea that hospital stays are better with TRIP, it's, it's good from an entertainment perspective, but it's also good physiologically to get the gaming done, uh, get the uh, physical activity to flush chemo out of your system after you've had an infusion, and all these things are really positive for the kids. 84% of kids report an improvement in mood with TRIP, and so mood uh, is kind of the focus of TRIP. It's a, a mood-effective environment. Um, if you can, go over to their booth. It's a it's very interesting tryout trip. Um, it, it does relax you. There's a calm and a focus element of that. Our kids tend to use both. And from a family intervention perspective, they tend to take the headsets and share them with brothers and with sisters and with parents. And um, because of that, I was having a conversation with Jeffrey Gold at the uh, University of uh, California, Los Angeles Hospital. and. Um, Jeffrey told me that, uh, that palliative care physicians just love family intervention. So we were excited that we sort of naturally got involved in that because just by sharing the headsets, just by doing it, uh, we ended up having families get engaged, which was really, really good. Uh, so 64% of families use VR together. We're working on growing that number. We encourage all of our families to share headsets or to get into multiple headset situations. And uh, we're very excited about that metric. And the pain tolerance was really interesting. I was talking to some folks yesterday, and um, pain tolerance is interesting because uh, the environments that we deploy to our kids aren't explicitly designed to solve for pain. And so just by doing meditation and having a meditation practice in VR and gaming, they have reduced pain, 50% report that pain has been reduced from the application of VR in that particular environment. So we're really excited about that because it's an ancillary benefit that we did not imagine would be as effective as it has been. So future initiatives, data, product, and market. Uh, we have a, a qualitative study going on right now. So our 46 kids are polled. They're individually polled on a lot of different parameters. How do you like this? When do you use this? How does this work? And so um, what we're doing is really gathering qualitative data. And so from a fundraising perspective, we're looking at quantitative data in the future. We're doing some different types of measurement. And so one of the things we're looking at is measuring brain waves in the hospital. So in an IRB approved hospital study, you're starting to look at you know, the ability to, uh, 
to measure brain waves, alpha, beta, theta waves, what do they mean, how they correlate to behavior, and gathering that type of data in a study. So that's one of the things that we're interested in through some of our partners. Um, we're looking at product development. Our team members have the capability to do some coding and to do some development. And if we can't find the right collaboration opportunity for us or, or, or platform, um, our children really need the ability to speak to their family through VR, meet with their relatives, meet with friends, meet with each other, share experiences, and get some kind of educational benefit out of that. And so we're looking at doing that. And finally, uh, I'll skip standards for a moment. Finally, I'll just leave a, a quick plea. Um, we would love for you to provide support as a partner or any support that you can for our program. We're very excited about the capability that we have. We love our team. We're board run. We're volunteer. And we're looking to raise some money to extend the number of headsets that we reach through the ACCO and help fund some of the research that we're doing in the hospital to prove that these great technologies are really as effective as we've tested so far. And uh, you know, we love 18 Loop, and we love your support. And uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to us. Thank you.